Good evening and welcome to the Sunderland Select Board meeting. Today is Monday, the 28th of December. <clears throat> and I hope everybody had a good holiday. We're kind of in that quiet in-between time between Christmas and New Year's. So <clears throat> I'm sure it was a little quieter than usual, but hopefully everybody had a good, safe first part of the holiday as we wind into the second. So um, we have a, a relatively light agenda tonight. We've got our usual up. Uh, select board town administrator updates and our COVID update uh, in our minutes. But then our main only main topic is an update on 120 North Main Street for which we have our, we've got our building inspector. We have Laura and uh, Gina here to talk about um, 120 North Main and go over some updates on that. We'll have some, you've got uh, stuff you can pull up, right, Jeff, afterwards as we get into it. Okay, great. Um, and we'll have some documentation on that, but uh, let's, Let's do our minutes first. We have our minutes from December 14th. Motion. I will second. All right, and uh, all those in favor of the minutes of December 14th? Aye. Aye. All right, three to zero on that. And that leads us into our update on 120 North Main Street, because I'm sure some folks are wondering how, how we're faring with that and everything. Would you like us to proceed? Sure. Okay. Um, well, we have a number of things we wanted to review with the select board tonight. Um, I'll maybe start with just a broad brush overview of where we're at in the process, mm -hmm. maybe moving to questions for the building inspector so we can hopefully clear him out relatively early and then we'll talk about some other issues. So hopefully you folks know that the comprehensive permit was issued by the Zoning Board of Appeals last spring. Um, there was an appeal, the appeal was settled, which allowed RDI to apply to the state for the bulk of funding needed for the project. Right. Um, and that was awarded over this past summer. So RDI has been in the process of procuring a general contractor, which it has done. Um, and I'm pleased to report that that number came in within budget. Um, also selecting a, a low income housing tax credit investor. Um, that's the other kind of market driven part of the financial equation. Um, and that number also came in on budget. So that those two elements, having a, a, a contractor who can perform the work for the price that we had hoped they would and having tax credit investors willing to invest the amount of money that we had hoped they would, two huge um, accomplishments, milestones for the project. So we're working now toward a closing on financing, which is essentially a legal transaction with all of the different financing sources and many attorneys, um, simultaneous with transfer of the property, which is currently owned by the town of Sunderland to um, Rural Development Inc. It won't be Rural Development Inc. It will be an, a, a sole purpose entity established by Rural Development yeah. Inc. solely to own this particular project, which is typical. Um, and a construction start on or about March 1st. Um, and it, it sounds like it's a ways away, but in our world, we're feeling like it's really creeping up on us. <laughs> so yeah. we want to kind of clear the trail and get, get going. Um, so that's a general overview of kind of where we're at in terms of status. Um, I did supply a, a current um, set of summary plans um, through Jeff that is available to you via a link. The plans honestly have not changed in a long time. They're pretty much the same plans we've been working on for years. Um, what's changed is the level of detail in those plans, uh, particularly the mechanical, electrical, plumbing drawings are significantly advanced over where they have been go. in the past. Um, the set that will go to the building department eventually is, um, this is again, just an overview set uh, we'll have a lot more detail than this, this one does. Um, this was pretty much what we reviewed with the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, they approved this as their kind of, they wanted a final plan review as part of the comprehensive permit. So I provided this summary to them because they didn't want to see all of the details on the electrical and mechanical and fire alarm system and all that either. Um, so these are renderings. They've not changed um, in a long time. This is pretty much the look of the building, it's an agrarian kind of barn-like aesthetic that the committee was looking for. You can keep scrolling down. Is it Jeff, are you the one? Yeah. Yeah, Jeff's doing it. Yeah. So again, same, same look that the committee's worked on all these years. 
This is just showing you the, um, you know, the survey of the of a piece of land with the bordering vegetative wetland identified on it. This is a demolition plan, and this is the site plan of the project to be developed, um, which is primarily the the purview of the Zoning Board of Appeals. This is really what they they essentially did a site plan review for us. So I'm trying to think if there are any significant changes. One change of note is the current driveway to this house is actually to the, what is it, the south of the property. And um, right now you'd have to back out onto to North Main Street. So we've actually eliminated that driveway. Property now has, will have only one driveway. It's, it's wide enough for two-way traffic. We'll help clarify where you go and also mean that nobody is backing out onto North Main Street, which That's good. is That's not a nice... fun. Um, so a couple of spaces are, are provided behind the old house, which has an addition, which will have three ground floor, one bedroom units. Um, and then the rest of the parking as you kind of come in with some pretty generous supply of handicapped accessible spaces near to the main entry of the building, which has 30 units. We are going to also supply um, an electric charging, one electric charging, charging station as part of this uh, site plan. Um, and the pricing on the general contract bids was good enough that we're able to incorporate a photovoltaic array on the large building, not on good. the antique house, but on the big building. So that will help make this a greener building, help defray some of the operating costs. It is a, an all electric HVAC um, and fresh air ventilation system. Um, so the only fossil fuels are uh, we're using propane for domestic hot water, and there will be a diesel supply for a gen backup generator um, on the property. Any questions? No. Thanks. Old story. Yeah. All right. And I think uh, if I remember, the completion date was was it the fall of 2022 or so, or estimated, right? Yeah. In case somebody was wondering about that. Okay. Yeah. That's so, you know, uh, we, we want to get a jump on construction as early this spring as possible. Um, and especially because there's so much fill coming into the site, we want to start bringing that in as early as possible. Um, so it has a little bit of chance to settle on the site. And then the contractor's estimate of completion is actually toward the end of July. We're kind of saying fall just because this this particular era of time in building has thrown a lot of curveballs yeah. at people. So yep. that's a little bit more of a conservative kind of Makes schedule. Sense. We don't know what will hit us in terms of, we, we don't think we'll have a lot of COVID related delays, but the supply chain has been disrupted enough that materials are still very true. Kind of yep. wacky in terms of how long they're taking to arrive on site. So we, we may hit some delays. Um, but we think um, summer or fall is when we'll be looking for the at least the temporary certificate of occupancy, which will allow the units to begin to lease up. We're planning to be leasing, RDI is planning to be leasing units between fall, that kind of late summer 2022 through spring of 2023. Okay. So the time to apply has not come, but it's coming. That will begin the marketing um, and you know the, the whole lottery process and all of that is, it's coming. Okay, good. We'll keep you posted on that. Um, so uh, one of the questions that we had, and I'm glad the, the building inspector's here with us. Um, I, I'm sure, I apologize, you probably got peppered with calls from general contractors when they were trying to bid on this. <laughs> there actually was one this morning that is, I guess is awarded. And yes. I don't ask me the name, but we spoke for a while this morning. Awesome. So Maroy Construction is the company that's been awarded. Uh, it's, it's a kind of family run company based in South Hadley. They've been around for about 40, 45 years working in the Valley, um, very capable. Um, they do a lot of public bid work. So we're sure they can handle the paperwork we're gonna throw at them um, associated with this project. Um, so yeah, there were questions about how it would be classed in terms of whether it was a commercial um, classification or residential. And the price is quite different depending on how it's classed by the building department. Um, and then I know there had been some discussion between uh, the building inspector and Jeff and maybe the select board about how the inspections will happen, whether they will be done directly by the building inspector or whether the town will engage a third party inspector. 
Um, I will add that the Zoning Board of Appeals has elected to engage a peer review engineer who worked during the permitting and will continue to do kind of check-in level of work um, also during construction. So just to let you know, to give you that assurance that there will be a, and she's a civil engineer. Um, so she's primarily looking at utilities and especially stormwater management on site, you know, kind of on behalf of the zoning board. Um, we will also have a wetland uh, compliance monitor. That was a requirement of the department of um, the DEP superseding orders of conditions that we had to have a compliance monitor. That person's required to be on site weekly, at least once a week or when it rains more than half an inch. Yeah. So okay. we'll see a lot of that person. And their yeah. job is really specific. Their job is to make sure that the erosion control measures are in place, they stay in place. We're not having any erosion into the wetland primarily. Right. Um, we will also have uh, a lender inspector who works for all the lenders um, into the project and comes on site monthly to do on site inspections and then issues a report to the various um, funders. Um, we also have uh, an OPM, uh, Owners Project Manager, named Jeffrey Dome, who's been hired by RDI to represent them during the construction phase. In addition, of course, the architect will be on site routinely, as well as the, the designing engineers. So just to kind of give you a sense that there will be a lot of um, professional caliber eyes um, on it during construction. It's a lot of public money going into this. It's a big build um, and we wanna make sure that everything is done correctly according to any you know, federal, state or local um, ordinance or regulations. So lots of eyes on the project as it's going under construction. Um, but I think it's up to the town to decide what's, what, what its eyes, you know, who, who it wants to delegate um, to be doing inspections. Okay. So do you want me to give a little, little feedback? I'm, I'm going to kind of compare you and I'm probably going to like to hear this, but I, I did reach out and I had talked to Joe Fight and Kevitz who I had taken over prior <clears throat> as commissioner and because he had dealt with it for Sugarbush. Yep. And cost wise, Sugar Bush was three times the size. Yep. Um, but we we don't have enough hour, we're not paid enough hours to do the inspections at a reasonable time when you have a project like this going. And you know, Joe had told me actually a year or so ago when this came through that I, I needed to, you know, bring forward about that. Um, it's not fair how long you know you'd have to wait for inspections sometimes. Um, and another big thing is the review. Um, his example is he had looked at sugar bush and I don't know if it was a half a page or a page of on the review, which we can miss anything. And it's going to most likely or hopefully be caught on the inspection, which is going to cost a lot more, you know, to you in the long run. And the company that did get the um, awarded the third party inspector for that was 14 or 16 pages. It was, you know, more than he had, which ultimately saves you because they have a specialist from the, from the, um, I have three, you know, three companies that were recommended, one of them being that same company. Um, yep. And, you know, they have somebody from the fire marshals, they have specialty people five to seven for each aspect of the plants, mechanical, um, you know, things like that, which aren't, you know, none of us can specialize in everything. So that's why, you know, in a project like this, as far as the to compensate, whether it be a precedent already said, I mean, it's up to the board that they did, you know, charge the commercial rate for the uh, sugar bush and now go to a residential um, and still do the third party, you know, that would be, you know, all up to them. Up to the board, up to the side. Up board. to the board uh, as yeah. how they want to do the fee for that. Um, it, it was you know, done 100% commercial for Sugar Bush and then the, the consulting. Um, I did a lot of research for the third party and I actually have one of the three has a consultant who's phenomenal, uh, retired inspector. He actually used to be in Sunderland. Eric White works for him and lives in Amherst. So it'd be a huge difference when Sugar Bush, they literally came from Foxborough every day. And I, I was there a lot with them when I could be. Um, but at that time, I actually was at a four day of work uh, for Southampton. It's five days in Hadley. So it's tough to get there after and during lunch, um, you know, now. But I did, you know, these guys are phenomenal and, and you know, learn every day with them. And um, so that would be my recommendation as far as the fees. I don't know how, 
you know, the board would, would consider that. Do you have a sense of what the cost would be for this project? Well, straight out, I mean, if you were just coming in a commercial job, it's, it's you know, 150 plus 10, 1,000. So an $8 million job is 80,000, um, you know, 80,000 and change. And they were the consulting, of course, this is a third of the price. So I want to say the consulting for that was, was over two because they were in for half a million in inspections um, at the sugar bush. So if we go a third, you know, I would say, 50 to 60, but I can't, you know, we'd have to give them plans and um, have them bid on what the review process would be and the inspections. Did you, in your conversation with some, I assume it's someone from Aurora Construction that you spoke with this morning, did they indicate what the frequency of inspections that they would need or was it a different kind of conversation? No, they, uh, they weren't really opposed. I mean, it was just over the phone. And like I say, I, I didn't get, because of the, the frequency, you're going to have them, you know, whenever you need them. And it's, it's not going to hold up. I mean, and, and I hate to keep referring to sugar bush, but they were there every day, at least once a day, um, just for the foundation between footings. And it, they really should have had a contractor that did that part that, you know, did it in, in say three pours, whereas they were just pouring small sections and it required to be inspected. So, they were paying that third party literally every day. I mean, they were sick of the, you know, traveling. And there was times that, you know, I would say, well, don't, you know, I would take care of it and not just meet them. Um, okay. They just, you know, they didn't have the time either. So and we may run into, they're very busy too. So it's going to be a good year. Um, the year after, I don't know because of the price of materials and all and, yeah. and I, the way I see things, but next year, from what I can, my estimate, it's going to be very busy and all three companies indicated, or I, I should say two, I didn't talk to Four Leaf, um, indicated that they are very, very busy. Um, and, and my thought is, you know, the one where they have a representative rate in, in Amherst um, to do the inspections and, and the review would be the most reasonable um, till we get the bids in, I, I couldn't say. So I've worked on um, projects of this scale or larger um, in other cities and towns, um, East Hampton, North Hampton, most, most of the time for me. And we've always worked with the local building department. And I'm just trying to think about how often, you know, we have inspectors coming through the site and it's certainly not every day. Um, so, so this project that we're talking about is the bulk of the work is one building so I don't think it would be staggered at quite as much as the Sugarbush Meadows, which was multiple, you know, buildings. Um, but between the fire chief, the electrical inspector, the plumbing inspector, um, and the building inspector, it starts to add up. But they're coming at different points in time, depending on when they're needed uh, on the project. There's usually a a clump of them at rough inspection, there's a clump of them kind of at, at finish inspection level. Um, I, I don't know what that amounts to in terms of total hours. Um, so it sounds like you're saying this third party inspector would take the place of all of your local officials, not just the building department, but electrical, plumbing, mechanical, no. No, nope, the the uh, plumbing electrical was, was no problem, they have two, you know, two plumbing inspectors, the electrical inspectors retired. Um, and he was there every day. He was able to be there when they needed. He's, you know, he's retired. And, and like I say, he could be there at any time. Um, the, the fire department had a lot of help from, you know, the third party. And, but we were there a lot of times because I was there when, when, you know, the chief couldn't be there, but I believe he's the Lieutenant. Um, Cody was there and, and do a lot of the inspections. So they would only stand in then for your role, not the other inspectors in town. Correct. Okay. Because you were so saying they had all these any, yeah, no specialists. Plumbing, no, right. So the specialists are of value simply to add information, not because they're inspecting for the different trades. Correct. Okay. In fact, they had no input on electrical plumbing. Oh, okay. It, it was just the fire and, and myself. Okay. So, okay. so, so, Tom, what they, 
basically they did the code review on the the building and the fire. Correct. Okay. And, and we and so we, we so, look at so, it as well. We you know we're going to review it as well. Um, and I know I know the chief did. Well, yeah. <laughs> no, I think I I think to to me if if you get your your <clears throat> your if you are able the the hardest part I would think is because we had this problem with the elementary school originally it was classified incorrectly on um, the type of construction and the class of construction so that that to me is the most that's the most important because that if if you get that identified correctly then you know what codes need to be applied correctly um and i know on fire protection i mean fire protection ha are their own group of people that i i think they're they're strange people um, <laughs> fire 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 I, and again that's one my only thing because they they talk a whole different language that i'm i i'm not familiar with but um but i i think if you um or if you if you talk to the plumbing inspector and the electrical inspector i think they they can tell you right away what their fees are going to going to be um and i i think that the electrical inspector actually um they have different fee structures um that he can can tune you into so i i don't think those are tough as, as far as the i i kind of agree with you i think sugar bush may have been a little well a lot different because they had five or six structures going on and it was kind of an accelerated project trying to meet um opening of the university and getting trying to get people in there so they, they may have been a little different on theirs on the way they did things but so so tom is it possible for us to get a a um to talk to these third party and get them to uh, give us an estimated cost of what it's going to be and, definitely, definitely, yes. And and we can pass that on to RDI, and and so that they know what they're dealing with. The contractor is supposed to try to get me some plans um, next week. Good. You know the the mo most revised, and you know, and I can forward them on to them. You know, and, and actually start reviewing myself. The sooner we get, you know, the the latest set. Oh, absolutely. I, I, yeah, because I mean, code review, code review to me is the most important thing. I, because that, that sets a whole tenor for the entire project. If, if you, if, if you can, uh, if you can uh, look at the code right now on the plans, you're right. You're going to, you're going to, you, you don't want to start and saying it's a type C construction and it'd be a type D or, and again, you, you just want to make sure everybody's talking the same, the same language in the start of the project. But it makes the whole thing goes a lot easier. Yep. Okay. So we had this basically identical conversation mm -hmm. with Jeff several months ago. And so um, we're really trying to fine tune our budgets. We're going into closing. Um, and so we're looking for some action uh, and decision making on, on the part of the board in terms of what our, what our financial commitment is going to look like. Um, I don't have a problem um, with you. Our our building inspector, as I understand, he'll be you know doing what he has to do when he has to do. So I don't have a pro personally. I don't have a problem with if RDI covers the ex uh, expense of the third party, whatever that whatever that number is. In lieu of paying for a building permit, or yeah, in, in my opinion. I, That's and, actually and, how the other project w was arranged, correct? Um, and and uh, Dave and Scott, they they have their opinion, but the uh, I had a little feedback that the third party was being paid direct. That the, you know there was some bias, whatever you want to call it. And believe me, they're not. They're they're professionals. The it was a, a joy working with the owner. Um, he actually was our state inspector for 18 months. The chief inspector Felix was, and um, you know, they're, 
they're right by the book. It's not like, uh, I guess you want to call it because they're paying direct that it was a payoff was what a couple, you know, uh, people had said, and it is nothing to do with that. They're, they're doing their job and, and, you know, it, it's, they're not adding inspections. They're, they're, you know, in fact, they, like I said, they were sick of coming every day. They were trying to save whatever they could for, for, you know, um, the corporation at that point anyway. So I'm 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 clear, I'm clear who tells an inspector to come every day because that would be extraordinary. The general contractor. Okay, so the general okay, contractor it, it, was it, it, calling for inspections, and they were so frequent that somebody felt like they had to go every day. Well, they weren't like I was just using the foundation footings as an example. They yeah. they set such a small amount up and poured every day. It was like a residential. Right. And, you know, you had to be there and inspect the, the rebar. You had to be there every day to, to, to do that. Um, whereas on a, okay. on a project, again, I'm using that as an example, like that, they would do, say, a third of the building, not just, you know, I don't know, right. uh, 30 feet of wall, you know, 30 feet of, of, of footing. It was, it was, it okay. was ridiculous. Um, right. And, and it, the contractor they had hired for that aspect was just taking way too long and, and you know, wasn't preparing enough with help a day. So would the town seek these prices? RDI would give money to the town and then the town would pay this third party inspection company? I don't know how that part worked because it was that was all prepared before I started. Okay. Um, I believe was it put in escrow or I'm not I'm not sure if the board remembers that. I don't remember now. It's a good question. And then my other question would be whether it's a fixed price or it depends on how many times you call them. Um, yeah. So, so Tom, if, if you were to, if you were to charge, if you were to charge a fee, the town of Sunderland's fee schedule, what would the uh, total cost be for the permit? I mean, anybody, any coming off talking to the contractor, he said it was an $8 million project. So yep. it would be $80,160 with the $10 to, to do it online. Okay. Um, that's what the town would get um, yeah. for commercial. And that's, just so you guys know, that's out of step with what we see in other communities. We're usually classed as residential for affordable housing. And I've done much larger projects for, you know, a building permit fee of 20 or $30,000. So we are looking at a differential um, to use this type of see, classification. I, see, I've worked in Greenfield, East Hampton, South Hampton, West Hampton, Hadley, and any any project like that has always been commercial. I mean, it's over it's over you know two family. Yeah. I've never seen it classified. I mean, this is up to the board, but as as far as that's why when originally when the the contractors are calling a while ago, you know, I said it. it, it with, they agreed with me. It's a commercial project. Um, and that, that's, but I, I don't know of any other community that I've worked in that, you know, would classify it as that. I'm not, I'm just yep. not fighting to get that. I'm just, just saying that's yeah. it. And a lot of times on residential, the only, and this is going back from when I started for um, the different towns, and this is, Joe had it set up. The reason residential is by the square foot is contractors can play numbers. And, you know, they would say, uh, <laughs> Tom's <laughs> laughing at that one. <laughs> that cost them a hundred thousand. And engineers can play with numbers too. Right, right. So, you know, and then like Joe always said, but, you know, make your list for me. And, and that's why that's done per thousand, per um, square foot for just the new residential. Um, and a lot of communities have agreed on that. Right. And, but a lot of times you'll do the numbers and it comes out really close within a hundred dollars on a residential home square footage wise as opposed to per thousand anyway so i don't you know i don't know what the square footage comes to for the whole project how that would would even so the square footage it's around uh 30 30 000 square feet thirty one thousand square feet when i ran the numbers i got two really different numbers which is that, that would started. be huge huge started asking the questions <laughs> yes. um, because the code, it is a, it, by code, it's a residential use um, for code compliance purposes. 
it's all residential. There's no commercial space in the property. It's all residential, common space for residential. And, you know, there's like an office for the property manager kind of, it's all accessory uses for the residential use. Um, right, but the building itself is all out of the IBC, you know, the uh, commercial code. Right. Okay. Yes, it would be. <laughs> so I guess at this point, um, since it, it, we just kind of want to get to resolution so we can have the appropriate budget um, for the project. And we can't close without a building permit. So, right. you know, this, this, the fact that this conversation has gone on for a couple months, I think we just need to bring it to some kind of conclusion, conclusion. Yeah. so we can get a permit. <laughs> now, procedurally, Jeff, do we need to um, do a vote for that? Or I don't know how it was done in the past or something of this size. Well, I, what, what I would suggest, I, I would suggest that you, you, you find out what the, uh, the uh, uh, cost would be from the third party, right. you, and I would I would put a bond together and just cover it out of the, the bond. So if it's a, if you think it's gonna, if you get the third party says it's forty thousand, and cover the forty thousand. If you, if it's fifty thousand, cover the the fifty thousand. That or eighty, whatever it is. That, you know, that's that's that would be my suggestion. I I think that would be fair all around. And that would be, you know, that would cover the, uh, that's all Tom needs to know is that you're going to be covering the third, uh, the cost of the third party. I mean, he can issue the, the building permit. Yeah, th the other thing that I would just add is it depends on who, you know, and I'll research who paid for it previously, but if that's something that RDI pays for directly, and the town isn't involved, I think you have a little bit more flexibility in the procurement. Um, and, I, I, but I think if that's, if that's the route that the board wants to go to say that, um, then, then yes, I think a, a vote would be uh, the way to accomplish that. Scott, your thoughts? I was just gonna ask for some clarification. As we talk about the cost of the permit fee versus the cost of a third party inspection, is the prerogative of the board to waive the permit fee as long as the third party inspection is covered by RDI? Is that what I'm hearing? That would Tom, be my suggestion. That would be my suggestion, Scott. Because, mm -hmm. and again, I, I don't, I, the, the, town, the town's putting up, what, $350,000, $400,000 for the project, right? Yep. yep. I, 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 the idea about the the whole thing on the building fees, building permit fees, town's not supposed theoretically the towns <laughs> towns aren't supposed to make money off from off right. from those fees. It's supposed right. to it's supposed to cover the cost of what it takes to do business. Right, it's not a profit. The inspectional center. thing. So, in my opinion, as long as 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 long as RDI is covering the cost that would be the responsibility of our building inspector. And, and, and again, even if, even if, even if was Tom was doing all of the building inspection and the code review, in my opinion, he would not be able to handle the fire and the fire su suppression. That, that, that whole, that's a whole different, that's a whole different animal. So that would have to be contracted out to begin with. So as long as as long as the town isn't of uh, isn't incurring any expenses, right. I would say that our building permit fees are waived so that RDI can pay for the town to hire a third party inspector. And Tommy, does that make sense to you? Well, I, I'm still going to spend a lot of time. I issue the permit. I I, I you know still right. going to. I'm signing the CO. I'm going to be out there with them when I can and yeah. more than I expect to be paid for because I, I enjoy the, my town. You guys treat me, you know, enjoy my job and love the town, but I think the town should be compensated some for, for mine, whether, it, you know, 
because there still is a lot of time required. Um, I'm on the phone all the time with the third party, just alone. Um, so if I mean, we calculate I, guess I, I would put a separate line number on my budget, what wasn't um, collected, just to show you know where where we were, why you know why we spending so much time and and the town didn't receive the funding. That's all. And I don't want to use another community's example, but um, a year or so ago, when Hadley was taking permits, they didn't charge for the you know municipality their buildings. So basically, the the new fire substation, the library, and the senior center, building wise, was never any money put in. So what um, Tim uh, and I had prior to myself did is he put it in the showed it in the budget how much work you know we've had to do, and the money wasn't taken in. Uh, um, that's a different thing. It's for the town. Right. But it's an example of what you're describing. Right. Right. Um, because it is, it's a lot of work. It's a, it's a lot. You're still, you know, you have an OPM. Um, you, you saw, you rep, I'm sure you all read in the paper about the, um, you know, the driveway, things that were missed by the OPM, the architect and all, and, and a lot of things that, you know, we all, we all miss things and the more eyes on it, the better. But luckily, you know, the fire chief and myself caught the, 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 um, you know, the road was too small for the trucks to even get around. The plans were never submitted. Yeah. Yep. And, um, you know, they tried to throw a little of the blame on him and I mean, he's just swamped and, and the plans were never submitted that were, we were asked to, and, you know, they, they issued the permit expecting them to be there and weren't at the time, but. So is there some middle ground that can be had, a reduced permit fee to cover our cost, right? While right. RDI uh, or developer picks up third party inspection and streamline that process? That that would be my recommendation. But it's up to the, you know, it's up to the board. I I you have an investment in it, so that changes things too. I didn't, you know, take that in consideration. Mm -hmm. Um, but that would be up to the board how you wanted to go about that. I think at our last meeting, a comment that I made was it's important the town at least covers its cost of operating. Right. right? Its cost of operating is important. Yeah. I, and I think if we achieve that, that'll be good. So what's the metrics for that? Let me just expand on that. What's the metrics for it? You're going to have plan review come to you, third party. You're going to have, you have to still sign off. You still have to issue. That's important. You're going to spend some time on site because you're just that kind of person. You can't have a building go up without just stopping in. Right. I mean, and, and uh, so I would you come I up with the, like a, the, go ahead. I'm sorry, sir. No, I was going to say, would you come up with like a separate estimate for that? Yeah. Let me, let me come up with something. Let's see where they come in at. I, I don't, okay. You know, I, I've tried because I want to save you know money as well. I, that's why I reached out and I, I bring up Eric White because he, um, you know, he, what if we made him an alternate and he took the time? I mean, this guy's unbelievable with his, some of the buildings uh, we, he's work, working we, on. We, we were know. very familiar with Eric. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just don't give him any red tags. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't no want to do anything with zoning. He doesn't want to do, but um, no. I was trying to see if, you know, do we put him as an alternate, you know, and, and what is it, but he works for that company and that would be the way he had to do it. And he was excited that I had asked him for, you know, if we could do one of the three, because he should beat them others hands down being right, right next door. Yeah. So we'd we'll be able to maybe have some uh, enough information, maybe to do a vote at the next meeting. You think? With the Wednesday's day. meeting, I, I honestly yeah, I don't. They're going to need time. for a little bit. Yeah, and that's true. And we've got the New Year's holiday in there too. So, well, can we come to some consensus about at least the at least the structure? I think so. Right. I think the structure is at least something we can walk away today with, and right. give RDI a sense of direction. Yep. Because I, I kind of like that middle ground approach. You know, that way. We're protected in terms of costs. So, so what I would I would say right now is that if you if you if you had them put out a building 
If they went through our town right now, it would cost $80,000 approximately for a building permit. So I, I would say that we could tell them it would cost no more than $80,000. How's that? Combined, sure. Right, yeah. I think that's reasonable. Right, they, that's they just, your want, cap. they just want a budgetary number to right, start Right, so they can move forward. Yep. How does that sound to RDI? Um, you know, again, it's it's something we'd rather have a number than not have a number. We'd certainly rather have a lower number than eighty thousand, but that's the best you can do. That's the best you can do. It it really, I just want to say, it's out of keeping with other communities that I've worked in. Um, as as is the water connection fee um, in Sunderland, which, which I know you don't have jurisdiction over. Um, the other thing that's important to us is timeliness. So. Mm -hmm we need to have our general contractor who's now been selected for about two months be able to go and get a building permit. Okay. Um, and so hopefully the fact that the town needs to do some more research about pricing or which party it wants to work with wouldn't um, prevent the building department from issuing that building permit. Can you get me those, um, the newest set of plans direct from you as a, I didn't even get a number from the gentleman I spoke to this morning because I was on the road. Yeah. Um, we so get if you could get, get me the newest one and, and he was going to try to get a couple of, um, you know, hard copies to me, not just online. So. Yeah. Um, I think, it, let me see where they're at. I know that he was waiting for them all to get stamped. I assume you want st them all stamped. Well, if you don't have them, it'd be better. But I mean, as far as yeah. what we we hand out to the you know third party, just to get an idea, because I'm gonna I can push oh, Eric, sure. and That's I'll have easy. the ballpark from him. I would hope right away. That's easy. I've already submitted all that to the town. I mean, I can I can send it. Basically, I just send a link, and it's got yes. all the plans. It'll be in there. Yes. Yep. And then you can send it to anybody, and they can see basically what the nature of the project is. Okay. Um, it's, you know, it's stick frame, it's this many square feet, it's got an elevator, it's got an, it's an NFPA 13, okay. you know, sprinkler yep. system. They'll get it. They don't need yep. to have every, you know, addendum that went out <laughs> to get the basics of the project. So I Correct. can get that to you. Yep. So if you can get me that sooner than later, and I will forward it, you know, to, to all, all of them, because I've spoken with, you know, Felix, and I've spoken with, with, you know, two of the companies already. Okay, great. Um, I really, I, you know, after talking to him, uh, the one that did sugar bush is probably going to be too busy anyway. Yeah. But I don't, so I don't know how that works. So if we need three bids or two's good or how that works, but. Um, not if RDI is covering the cost, we don't need them. Okay. All right. So, so it's I'll, not, I'll a town, really push, not a town process. Okay. I'll really push Eric because I know he's going to come in the, 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 the least expensive being, that's a lot of travel from Foxborough every day. Sure. Or, or every inspection. Yeah, no, that's a little scary to hear about that. But um, when we selected the OPM for RDI, we also looked at his geographic location because right we makes want sense. To spend a lot of time paying people to travel, especially yeah. in the winter too. You know, right? So is, is the OPM? Are, are you familiar with the OPM? His name is Jeffrey Dome. Okay, have you worked with him before? I have not worked with him before. Folks at RDI have worked with him in the past. Um, and he, you know, we checked references. He seems pretty good. Okay, because I, I, I mean, I know. I, I That's think huge. Well, the, you, you know, ju just, just from our, our experiences, the OPM is supposed to be a, a lot. Um, it's supposed to be a, a, a clerk of the works on steroids. Um, yeah. yeah. Listen. I don't trust anybody. So don't worry about that. Well, and and that and, and, that's, and that's, I guess that's my that that's my point because that there the o, there there's a lot there's a lot of responsibility put in the OPM. Um, yeah. So and, we, and I I just know that you 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 should have to you that that working relationship has to be yeah so seamless. Yeah. Okay. We do have a lot of redundancies. I hear you because I can't believe some of the stuff that gets missed. And hmm. and and right and 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 actually, if, if we went back through our from Scott and I learned when we went through the uh, elementary school project that we would have been better off without a clerk of the works. 
that's right. <laughs> and that's no, that's that's true. That, I know. That's absolute, I know. I hear you. I hear you. So and, but, and 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 I know by law now that you need an OPM because it's over what three million or whatever the number for is. For public so you, works, you do. Yeah. So, so by law, you have to have an OPM, but there. Yeah. And 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 when they for, when that when first in the thing, for us from um, our, um, a municipality that had a problem with a building, we thought that was the greatest thing. But now sure. I've been dealing with OPMs now for the last twelve years, and I was like, oh my god, I I just you really need to have just, just like Tom said. Well, how come no one reviewed the size of the of the uh, driveway going into the, the structures it's like right you know so well I'll, I'll give you i'll share one piece of good news so the architect that we hired for this is is quite good um right. and so the plans went out and there were 100 percent construction drawings and they were bid on by five different very qualified general contractors including western builders who did who did and the guy the estimator from western who's very particular said so this is the first set of 100% drawings I've seen in years, because usually the plans go out. It starts with the plans. <laughs> the plans right. go out with just wrong information. And then there's a lot of squabbling with owners and general contractors about who fixes the fact that the plans were wrong. Right. So I feel like, you know, we, we at least have that going for us that we think we're starting with a decent plan set. And, and it's like, kind of like you were saying about getting the code identified correctly. Half the battle is getting a good plan set. Um, and then at least you can follow the trail at that point about how to fix yeah. things. I, I mean, it's just from my, my experience. I mean, and 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 Scott Scott's been on Scott's been on hundreds of jobs. And 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 a lot of times it's like, but it's wrong. It's <laughs> And, and and the guy said, Well, I don't care, you just bid on it. And it's like, well, no, that's not how we do business. Yeah. <laughs> No, I know it's and it's getting worse. Honestly, we could probably talk about this for an hour. Yes. The level of quality control in this industry is degrading uh, week by week. Sadly, yep. Laura. And, um, yeah, sorry. I just, if I was if I was a if I was a kid going to college right now, I'd really look at construction management as a uh, as a major. I I mean because because if you're good in construct if you're if you're good the sky's the limit. Yeah. Uh, and and I mean, I think that the construction management people are taking over for what architects used to be, you know, 40 years ago. Now, now it's all the, the management of that construction, you know. I think right. they, they're, they're getting a bit, architects are starting, they're doing their beautiful buildings, whatever, but now their construction managers are really the guys that are putting together the, these projects. So with the architects. But their stress level is, it, it's only going to get worse, like yeah. Laura said, every year because help and, and workforce is just, it, it's, it's crazy out easy. there. <laughs> yeah. 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 Did you have a you question? Have to, you have to, yeah. you have to know how many, you know, how, how many, how many, uh, how many lineal fleet of uh, a, a drywall can be put up by a crew and, and you, you, eight hours and, and who's making sure that they're putting that eight out, you know, to getting that yep. eight hours in. So, oh yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's different today. So Jeff, go ahead. Yeah, yeah I was just wondering, Laura, uh, are all the procurements that you do, do they have to be satisfied public procurement because of state fire? Okay, okay. They do not. It would be great to get three prices. I kind of feel like this is, it. it's the, it's almost like when we paid money to the ZBA to hire their peer review engineer, this feels a little similar to me, um, but you know, I, I don't think any of this is going to hunt you down if you get two prices instead of three on something like this. Um, Especially if for us, well, we're we're very motivated to have someone who's good and timely and not super expensive. So, and we yeah. can't procure it directly. I don't think. I just don't think it would make sense for us to go and hire for it because we don't know exactly what the building department wants and needs. I think right. they're the best ones to say. Here's what we want you to do. Here's what we're going to hold. Here's what we want you to hold. I don't necessarily want to be in the middle of that because I don't have the information. Okay. So, I, you know, this is the first time I'm learning about the potential cost of the third party inspector and 
at that it's going to require us to go through an IFB process. So it's going to, it's going to take at least several weeks. Um, if it's going to be close to or over $50,000, we have to, we have to advertise it at least two weeks in advance. We have to, it, it's more than just getting uh, or just reaching out to three vendors. If we were confident that it came in under 50, that it would come in under 50, we can try that method. Yeah, um, let's try it. Let's okay. try it first. <laughs> okay. We can, yeah, we can certainly do that. If they don't, we'll have to start from the beginning and do a full IFB. So, I mean, if you want RDI to direct pay, I think that could be worked out, but I don't think RDI has the information to design the scope of work for this inspecting firm because, again, it's not totally that. clear to me what Tom's going to do and what he wants someone else to do. Right. So, Tom, we should touch base tomorrow uh, if you have time, and we'll, yep. we'll talk about that and, and start um, getting that together as quickly as possible. Okay. It sounds like you'd need to scope that work out too anyway, so that you know what you're doing versus what the other, the, the other firm is doing, so. Or put a, a, a guesstimate on your time commitment. Right. Okay. Hey, Tom, do you think there's any neighboring communities that have alternates that could pick this up? No. N Northampton had three, they cut down to two. I mean, it's, Mark Snow, Greenfield, he's from three people to two. Um, and his, his new guy just got the first three tests done. He wasn't even certified. It's, it's, there's nobody out there and the state isn't, you know, isn't um, giving us the, the permission to start taking the test. You know, they're, they're denying everybody, unfortunately, now the, the committee. Mm -hmm. So, um, no, I, Mark Snow, I mean, from Amherst, he worked how many years to, to Greenfield? Another one that, you know, I, I, he was one of my uh, mentors and you learn every day from him and, and there's no way he has the time, even as an alternate, you know, he can do it as an alternate, but um, to do the inspections, it, it wouldn't be doing them justice. Do you, do you, what about, Lou, what about Louis Hasbrook? Cause he's mostly retired now. He's retired. And see, I, I suckered in and, and helped Goshen for two weeks and I tried to, you know, if he was, he was in the retiring thing and, and he couldn't, wouldn't even do, do that. And they ended up, the, the commissioner actually comes, I think from Orange or Athol to Goshen now, one or two nights a week. It's, that's how shorthanded the, the profession is, unfortunately. It's quite all. Do you want me to put out a feeler to Louis Hasbrook yeah. just in case? Okay. Cause I've worked yeah. with him quite a bit. And oh, me too. About yeah. as seasoned as they come. Yep. Yeah, he gave me a great offer for Northampton, and then I'm glad now they're down to two because of the COVID. So um, I'm actually glad I was held up for Hadley and Sunderland. <laughs> yeah, that's it, I know. He's a great guy. So Yeah, yeah, and he's he's done a lot of our type of work inspections okay. in Northampton, so he's yep. unflappable. So when is our next check-in date? Right, we're leaving with homework. When are we checking back in? When do you guys meet next? Uh, the next Monday, right? Yep. Is there next one? Do we have that on the agenda for next Monday, Jeff? We can have it on there, yep. Okay. Tommy, do you keep... think that's gonna be enough time to get some at least initial feedback about anybody interested? I'm gonna call at least, uh, call, I'm gonna call Eric once we get off this meeting. Okay. And, and just see, I, I don't, I figured I'd let Jeff know tomorrow. Um, you want to put it on that and then see if we need it the, till the next one after that. I mean, I'd want to get it done for them as well. It's right. Yeah, I'm we'll full just, business. I want everything going. You yeah, know that. yeah. So if yep. I, and let me, let me reach out to him and, and cause you know, they want to get, if you're going to have one of them do it, they need it sooner than later too, because it takes the time for the review. So yep. Yeah, we can pencil it in and then we usually finalize the agenda like Thursdays for the next week. So, okay. So Laura, Laura, you're going to ship off plans. Tom's going to start shipping them around. You're each going to be making some phone calls. And Jeff, yeah. you're going to look at the $50,000 threshold and third party payments versus municipal procurement. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Roger. So we have other business to discuss with the board. I don't know that we need mm -hmm. to hold your building inspector. I don't know if you need him for other things. 
Can we talk about him when he signs off? Yes. <laughs> go ahead. Sign off if you dare. There you go. <laughs> thanks, well, Tommy. Thank you. Thank right, you thanks. very much. Appreciate, yeah, appreciate it. Have time. A nice new year. Thanks, you, you too. Yep, bye now. <laughs> bye. So um, speaking of deadlines, uh, we're trying to get to this closing on March 1st. Our funders will require us to have a building permit in hand to close. It is a non-negotiable item. So we need to have the ability to pull a permit um, well before that date so that we, if we don't have it, you know, we really should have it by the end of January to be kind of showing our hand that we're, we're really ready to proceed. Yep, yep. So hopefully we can all work together to, to make that happen. Um, we sent, RDI sent an update six month report to the board recently, just really it's backstory. It's, it's, I don't know if you have questions about that. We're, we're in full press, full court press yeah. at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, so we have next what's called a business call that happens with all of our funders. And Jeff has kindly agreed <laughs> with only a little bit of arm twisting <laughs> to join that call on behalf of the town of Sunderland um, to kind of be eyes and ears for the board. Um, whether you feel like you want to have him participate in all of the closing calls, I would say it may not be the best use of his time. It's a lot of legal stuff with attorneys. So how to do the dance of staying involved but not committing, over committing your staff resources to it is, you know, we'll just, we'll have to kind of thread that needle a little bit. Okay. But he'll at least come on the business call which is gonna be on January 5th and hear a little bit about long lead time items and sequencing. A lot of what the funders care about in terms of the town is what does the town want? Because towns are so individual. And so they will wanna understand what Sunderland wants. So Sunderland's committed $100,000 in CPA money, for example. You know, How is that money floating into the project? When is it gonna be available? Um, the town has a lot of requirements stipulated in its option to sell the property for a dollar to RDI. What does that mean for the other funders? They're gonna to wanna to know that stuff as well. So I sent an email and it just was a few hours ago and you probably haven't seen it or digested it, but the, the original option to purchase was written by someone at KP Law along with RDI's attorney, Felicity Hardy. And it is protecting the town, you know, in a lot of ways to make sure that what happens with this property is affordable housing. So it calls for a land development agreement. Hmm. Then it calls for a regulatory agreement. Then it calls for an affordable housing restriction. And I was reading it today, I was like, oh my God, they just threw all this stuff in to protect the town. So it's, I think now that the project is for real and we know what it's gonna, what's gonna be built, who's gonna build it, who are the different other parties, state funders that are gonna be also putting stipulations and, and watchdogging to make sure it stays affordable housing, which is really, I think the primary focus of the town's agenda was we, we wanna secure it as affordable housing in perpetuity, which typically means 99 years. Um, it's time to revisit and say, what does the town really need now to assure itself that its agenda is met um, and is the town wanting its own independent documents or is the town willing to sign a shared regulatory agreement? So a number of years ago, the state of Massachusetts created something called Mass Docs. It was an attempt to unify the instruments that are used in financing affordable housing. So it wouldn't be a million hours of attorney time renegotiating these kind of formulaic boilerplate documents over and over again. So there is a math, mass stocks affordable housing restriction, for example, that all the lenders, the State Department of Housing and Community Development, mass housing, anybody who's got a, a finger in the pie will sign off on. So the town of Sunderland has as its option to be one of those parties. Um, and I could certainly find the boilerplate for that and share it with Jeff and he can share it with someone at KP Law. Yep. Um, there's definitely gonna need the town attorney has to be involved at some level. And that's kind of a discretionary question for the select board is how much of your own documents do you want? How much are you willing to share with other parties? What are your priorities um, in terms of securing the site for affordable housing? 
So you're still using KP Law. We're going to want to have a contact person at KP Law um, who's the go-to, I guess, representative. I don't know if you have someone that you routinely work with there as town council. Dave Jenkins has been our town council yeah. specifically point person for a long time, but then it gets disseminated to be a specialty inside the agency. Okay. Um, yeah, especially they, they have they have people that, that deal with land use and they also have construction right. people. Right. Yeah. So he'd be so, a, like the point person, I guess, to start with. So I guess you, I'm wondering what's the process for identifying within KP law who's the attorney who's going to work on behalf of the town on right. this transaction. I can get that information for you. I think it's probably yeah. going to be Sharin Everett, at least for part of it. Okay. And um Potentially Mac somebody else. McEnany for contracts. So Sharin Everett, for those of you with long memories, Sharin <laughs> Everett is the one who did the option. Yep. So there is some, she may not continuity. remember it at all because it was years ago, but <laughs> yeah. you know, at least there's some, a little bit of continuity there. Mm -hmm. right. um, and, and again, at the point when that option was written, this project was just a glimmer in all of our eyes. And right. so it was had a lot of very protective language in it and very prescriptive language. And it's just, I think, a time to re revisit and see what, what stays it. and what goes. Um, the option also said that when RDI had met certain tests, like getting all its permits and getting its financing, that we would have a purchase and sales agreement. I'm not a lawyer, but I'm not sure that we need one. So that's a question that I have for RDI's attorney, for your attorney. Okay. We have a very detailed option agreement. We actually are moving toward property transfer at a known date in the very near future. Do we need an intermediary purchase and sales agreement for right. four weeks? <laughs> I don't think we mm -hmm. do, but that's a question. Huh. Um, also an attorney question. And then um, as the town commits, the town committed CPA money, it was voted on at town meeting. Um, and so we're gonna wanna draw those funds at closing. So just, Ooh. we're needing to understand the logistics of how the money gets released. Yep. And it can probably go into escrow with RDI's attorney for closing. Okay. And that would be a way that the town could assure itself it's going into the deal. Um, it was it was voted on um, just basically being for the project. So it didn't really stipulate, you know, for design or for construction or for anything else, but we took yep. it to mean that it was for when the project was going to become a reality <laughs> rather than mm. for planning. So <laughs> that's why I would suggest the appropriate time to bring it is in is at closing. Um, and the mechanism is usually what will happen is a town will give its CPA money to RDI and RDI will in turn lend it into the project. For a variety of in, insanely complex tax reasons, that's how the, the tax attorneys tell us to do it. Um, it's a deferred mm -hmm. loan from RDI into the project. So, okay. but on, uh, for, for, for your, I, I just need to understand what happens in Sunderland when CPA money is released and, and what do we need to show the town to get them to release it and how long does it take? Right. Yeah. So I, I think I can answer that, I hope. And, and Tom, feel free to jump in because I know you're on the, the CBC and you might know better than me, but I think we would need uh, a, an invoice uh, from RDI for, for yep. the amount. Yep. Um, and then the CPC would review that and say, yes, this is the project that we dedicated the funds for. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, they would uh, submit a, a bill warrant and we would get it signed and Sorry. a check cut and send it over. So I, I don't think that process would be too difficult. Sounds right. too easy. I'm suspicious. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds good. Because it was approved at our, well, I was going to say April, but at our last town meeting. So it was approved at town meeting in 20. Uh, actually, a little yeah. earlier. Yeah. 2017, yeah. 2018. It was a while ago. So Time the blurs. funds are presumably are on hand um, and have been reserved for the project. Mm -hmm. So, okay, that's great. Um, so yeah, I think the big question is it, once we find out which attorney uh, the town's gonna be using, which person at KP, KP Law, then 
that person will probably look for guidance from you guys mm -hmm. about do you want your own affordable housing restriction? Do you want to sign the mass docs? What are the pros and cons either way? I will tell you it's simpler for us and for our funders if you just glom on <laughs> and not start generating your own documents. Um, but it's your prerogative to do that. And um, it just, it, it, there's, we, we, we have like eight attorneys on these closing and it just, they, <sighs> It just takes a lot of, it's a lot of money for a lot of attorneys legal. fees. Yep. Yeah, it really is. And every time somebody wants something a little different then all the attorneys have to review it and it's, you can imagine. So to the extent that you feel comfortable joining with other, uh, the state department of housing community development on the mass docs, affordable housing restriction, I would encourage you to do that, but we have, it, it totally is your call on um, how you want to do it. Okay. Um, there is reference in the option agreement to a final plan review by the select board. Um, and I just wanted to, to remind people that that's there. It says essentially the select board will review the plans kind of concurrent with when they were submitted for the comprehensive permit. So I know that a, a plan set, a full comprehensive permit application set went to the select board the time that RDI applied for the comp permit. I just sent this link tonight to Jeff, which is really not very different, but a little different. Um, and I just wanted to, I don't know. I, I don't know how formal it needs to be that the select board is approving these as the quote final plans. I think it was again, a protection to make, the sh make sure the town wasn't getting something it didn't want, that it, yeah. that it had this approving authority. Um, I don't know, Scott, do you? have any sense of that or what action, if any, the select board needs to take on that? I think one of the reasons the creation of the 120 North Main Committee is that the select board in and of itself didn't doesn't represent necessarily the composite that was required for the input in the review. So it may well be that this board takes its recommendation from, from that working Maybe. group. And the reason that working group has already made its recommendation you know, may well suffice. At least that's my opinion. Yeah. Okay. Because you, as your town council combs through that document mm -hmm. and our RDI's attorney combs through it, they're going to say, well, did this happen? Right. Has the select right. board given its final approval or of the final plans? <laughs> no. And so it may be that you want to take a vote on that. I don't know if you want to vote on that tonight or some other time, but uh, we can we can knock that out next Monday, and I'll give a chance to okay. get emails emails out to that working group saying just just to be clear, you voted this design right. We voted <laughs> yeah. this this group, and get get yeah. that back and get that back in the form of um, information. Again, yeah. we, we know that group was in, was well uh, engaged yes. and uh, has advised maybe, the board. So yeah, definitely maybe that yeah. maybe that's fitting in the language of that uh, that was in the uh, original charter. Uh, Charter. Yeah, and feel free to circulate the link that I sent to Jeff this okay. evening. Um, they've already gotten it. Lauren, I know, yep. has gotten it. The The 120 North Main Street Committee hasn't met that I know of recently. Right. Um, right. They have done some email go arounds and I know they've been, they were engaged when we were doing the ZBA review, which was right. also the final plan review. We just went back to them for a final plan review. Um, they also chose the name um, mm -hmm. for the project. So. Right. It had been called Sunderland Senior Housing, which isn't really a place name. It's more of a description. Yeah, right. <laughs> so we wanted to get away from that. So we, um, RDI gave them a short list of names and they chose Sanderson Place as the name, which is the name that's gonna be going forward. Nice. Um, it's uh, taking, picking up from the, I think it's Henry F, Henry S. Mm -hmm. Sanderson. Henry something Sanderson house, which is the house at 120 North Main Street is the historic name of that property. So that's, we're kind of carrying forward that uh, place go. name. I would expect that the input from that working group, but via consensus, uh, we can, we can take this action a week from today. Okay. Makes that sense. would be great. The, uh, the Laura, one, one thing is, um, the, the, fam, the family that it came from that owned it, uh, Sophie Bashinsky. Yeah. So Sophie was actually a, um, you, you know, you talk about me generation and all that stuff, but um, Sophie, um, her husband, she had two children. 
Um, her husband died um, when they were very young. Um, she was she was a single mom, raised uh, uh, a daughter and a son. Um, both went on to college. Both graduated. Um, I always I I I'd always looked at. Um, kind of recognizing her uh -huh. and what she did, uh -huh. um, you know, something like Sophie's Place or um, uh -huh. she was from the, the uh, Pine Nook um, section of Deerfield. That's where she grew up. But something to, to uh, memorialize um, yeah. Sophie, um, because I'll tell you what, and, and as you know, someone went through many, 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 many years of trying to find a place um, to put senior housing. Yep. And her family, um, her son and daughter, if it wasn't for their um, being receptive when we first contacted them about the whole project, it would never have happened. And, and yeah. that's actually, and, and that location is a kind so that that's one of the things if you you know yeah look at Sophie yeah. also. We we had a similar situation at a senior housing project in West Hampton. The project ended up being called West Hampton Woods, but there was an instrumental senior, Eleanor Miller, who just championed the cause. And they ended up making a little garden that's called Eleanor's Garden or something with a rock with her name on it and telling it a little bit about her life. So yep. Um, I think that we can look for ways either in the building or on the property um, to or, try or to even the house, the house, you know, the old house that, uh -huh. that was her house. Yep. Something like that would be like a plaque or something on there. Yeah, yeah. there could yeah. be a plaque where there's there's going to be a common room in yep. the large hmm. building. Sometimes rooms, yep. common rooms are named after people. And, you know, maybe yep. we can dig up a photo of her, you know, just to bring her to life a little bit more. Um, so I think we'd be happy to try to find ways to do that. Okay. What do you think, Gina? I think that's a great idea. I, uh, I, I, I really, I like that idea and I think that we can certainly find something. Um, one of the other things that we're looking for and we're going to look locally to try to find some inspiration is, um, is artwork. To put uh, in in the in the in the building, not in the house, but um, in the main entry area, um, that will in some way tie tie this new structure to the local community. So um, we will certainly keep that in mind. Yeah, and and send suggestions if you think of them of local cool. artisans yeah. that we might want to tap, or you know, kind of iconic. You got the button ball tree, but. <laughs> Yeah, you know, things that things that Some connect, connect it and ground it in its place and the history right. of the place. We've been we've been um, we've been very fortunate that we've had some wonderful artists in town that uh, have contributed. Um, That's true. Um, and I there's a there's a couple right now that that would probably be more than willing to help just. Yeah. Just putting out the call would be uh, enough. So, so Jeff, if we could have something on the uh, the web page about uh, um, artwork, and it doesn't have to be a painting; it could be sculptures or whatever. Right. Uh, right. That'd be a great because because yeah. we we we've actually done one, we've had wonderful success with that in the past. Yeah, I mean, it can be quilting, it can be stained glass, it can be there's all kinds of forms that it might take. Um, but yeah, we want to bring some of the flavor of the, the local community into the place. Yep. Be nice. Just don't ask me to draw a picture. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we'll save you for other tasks. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Love it. All right. So I think I'm through my, I'm just looking quickly back at my notes for this okay. meeting. I think we pretty much hit on everything. Good. We are starting to get inquiries and I know that RDI, are you running a list, Gina? Because I know someone came through Jeff. 
Um, we are. So right now, um, it is a notification list only. Uh, and Pam Parmakian, who is the director of our property management uh, at the Housing Authority, uh, is maintaining that list. And, and Jeff, I believe, has the, the contact information. So uh, we, we are not advertising proper yet, but um, obviously word gets around. Um, there's been a couple of pieces in the newspaper. So uh, we are maintaining that list. And, um, and we're also beginning to build uh, our, our communications lists for the, for the lottery and, and the initial marketing. So we're updating and looking through um, all of the local and, you know, from sort of Hampshire County out, we're, we're going in a nice sort of wide radius to make sure that we're getting all of the senior centers, libraries, uh, social service agencies, um, and, and other housing uh, that might have interested uh, applicants. So, um, so we could put it on our website as well. I would, I, you want them to do that now, Gina, or wait? Well, would you, you could put a link, uh, just a link, I think at this point to our website, which has, um, which, which basically drives everybody to Pam, uh, yeah. at, at, if that's okay. I, but, I, um, I've been asked a number of times. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, ultimately there'll be a, an application process and a lot of marketing and, but at this stage, it's more just keeping a running list of people who want to be notified when that time comes. Absolutely. But we, we are really interested in, in driving as much demand as we can and to try to get a groundswell. You know, it's something to be managed um, because it's not going to be available tomorrow, but uh, people plan. This is a long-term, this is a long-term thing. And, you know, adult children of elderly parents and folks themselves are, you know, this is not something they're looking at for tomorrow. And so thinking about something for 16 to 18 to 20 months from now, it's a good time to start thinking about that. So um, it is because they have to start worrying about that. You have to start planning on your uh, um, renewal of leases. You know, are you looking for a 12 month or a six month lease? And right. so there, there and, and there's people that are looking forward to the project. They really good. are. Good. So I will just on that topic um, mention the select board wrote a letter to the Department of Housing and Community Development requesting a local preference for this project. Uh, Jeff followed up once or twice with them and the word that came back was it would get kind of ironed out during closing. So we don't have a definite yes or no, as far as I know, the town has not gotten a definite answer. Is that right? Um, we, we are preparing our materials as if it will be approved by the state because we think that's more likely than not. Um, but it will hopefully within the next two months become clear to everyone. Right. As clear as the DHCD <laughs> could make it. <laughs> well, then, you know, at some point you have to, you're either marketing one way or another way. And right. So, right. but yeah, they, they, um, they get pretty overwhelmed as well there at the state yeah. agencies. So okay. hasn't come to the top of the pile yet. <laughs> That's a good descriptor. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So you've got uh, hit all your topics and everything for tonight. Yep. Okay. And we've got some homework, and uh, we'll be some touchstones over the next couple of meetings, so we can keep things moving along. So it'll be great. Okay. And you know, we're aware that MassDOT um, is going to be starting the road work this spring. Right. Is what we hear. Yep. yep. Um, and we continue to reach out to them. Um, and would encourage you if they're talking to you to just be like, hey, remember, yeah, don't, <laughs> don't forget. Going on. <laughs> That's right. I think it's going to work fine. I think the timing is is okay. I think that you know the danger is that we'll get in each other's way. I, I mean, I think that is what's going to happen. We're right. going to have some trucks waiting to get into our site because there's road work happening. But um, at yep. least the road will be open, and we right. can tie it's our true. utilities in and not worry about cutting into it later that's my right, hope right. Yeah. So. keep our fingers crossed for good timing yeah true all right okay thank you so much thanks. for all of your thank time you. tonight all right, really thank appreciate you. it happy new year thanks all right thanks laura thank thanks, you. Gina. thanks for coming guys bye-bye bye. all right <clears throat>
I see Laurie is still hanging. Was she there? She is. I was. I just. And you're still hanging out there. Thanks. Appreciate it. No problem. So, what uh, what do we have for our weekly update? Our numbers of positive cases are trending definitely down. That's an um, excellent thing to hear. It is. The report that came out on Thursday, December 24th from the state showed we had 15 for the previous two weeks. My numbers going forward for the next report that's coming out will show that we have 11. So okay. we're, we're definitely going down. Um, and then for the report after that, we have um, six and that report end date will be January, uh, January 2nd, 2021. Okay. So right. we're definitely going in a great direction. Yeah, good. that's good. And that, that breakout report was interesting too, you know, showing that like the, the big jump in cases in December wasn't really tied to the university. Which it, was, was, it was not. It was yeah, just general folks. Just general folks. Yep. yep. Exactly. Yep. So that was interesting. You know, probably a, a definite Thanksgiving Yes, I've influence. spiked from that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So we'll see what happens with the Christmas influence yeah. next. I was just going to say, keep our fingers yeah. crossed that we don't have another spike there, you know. Right, and right. hopefully with the vaccine starting to roll out and everything, things will quiet down. Yeah. Um, for the police and first responders here in Sunderland, I'm hearing mid January is a possibility for vaccines. Yep. Um, from what I'm hearing, it's going to be FERCOG is going to be involved and the Fire Chiefs Association will be involved. So okay. we'll see how that goes. All right. Well, thanks. It's good well, news okay. this time, you know. Yep. Hey, Jeff, um, do, you have a, do you have something to add to that? Yeah, just a, two minor things. Um, Lori mentioned that we had 15 in the last report. We were one of three communities in Western Massachusetts that were green and not yellow or red. So hey, there we uh, go. just to put it into perspective a little bit. Um, I also wanted to mention that the federal government passed and, and the president did sign another, um, I guess, relief phase bill. four of the federal relief and potentially included in that uh, is an extension of the ability to use uh, coronavirus relief funds. Um, those had to be spent by Wednesday. Um, had to, and we had to receive it. And so we're still waiting on guidance from the state. But I did want to mention that um, there there is uh, additional, I think, unemployment uh, benefits. There's also um, potentially stimulus checks for certain yeah. populations. So uh, full ramifications are, are still being understood, but I, I just wanted to mention those two things. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah, looks like there's finally, there was finally some movement at the national level on that. So that's good. All right, great. Well, thanks for the update, Lori. Keep okay. our fingers crossed for the next one. report. Definitely. Yeah. So what Lori had talked about before about vaccines. So right now we're in phase one. Yes. Right. Um, what people should understand is that there's phase, phase one has many sub phases. A, B, C, and yes. There's there just so everybody knows, there's one A, one B, police, fire, EMS. Um, they're, they're one C, they're not A or B, but then you have one D, one E, one F. So it, it, it is a process. It's going to take I, a while. It, it, it is a process. And I, I can tell you that, um, Sunderland Deerfield, Whiteley, Conway, belong to a health organization. We we are ready for an EDS that would be given over probably in Deerfield. Deerfield's a Deerfield because they're the largest 
they're the lead um, town. So when they talk about Deerfield being on the thing, that's us. So if you happen to read anything and it says about Deerfield, that is that is us. Deer, Deerfield's the one that's filling out all the paperwork, which doesn't break our heart that that they're filling out all the paperwork and stuff. <laughs> but we we have an EDS an EDS is emergency dispensing site. We have worked it for the last seven or eight years. We understand it. We've modified it over the years. Um, right now, we actually, the last, our last one that we had was a drive-through at the Deerfield Highway Guard. So you have, don't get out of your car and it's not done outside. So we don't have any tents or anything blown around, but you actually drive through the uh, highway facility and Deerfield. So you're covered. So that has been worked on. Um, we have, we do have some cold storage. They're not the ones that for the Pfizer has to be whatever. Super cold. <laughs> Super cold. But we do have them. The other ones for that Moderna, we do have freezers for that. So we are, we are prepared. And, and actually we have been in contact with the state. Actually the state's been in contact with us about setting up our EDS. So that may happen. So, um, but as I just read through the list, um, there's five or six subsets of phase one. Right. So it, it may be, it's gonna take a little while, but yeah. stand by. Right, we've done that for years with flu shots and things like that. So anybody who's done that, you know, will have some familiarity with it. Right, we're, yeah. we're, and and we may be asking for volunteers, um, to help man it. But your duty, the duties uh, are all documented, and they just give you a piece of paper and explain what you need to do. But uh, we may we may need help. But it, it, it'll be a lengthy process, so um, well, stay tuned. It will, it will happen. It, it's going to happen. Yep, it'll be a new year. So there you go. All right. All right. Thanks, Lori. You're welcome. Thanks. Have a good night. Have a good new year. Have a good night. We'll see you next week. Yep. Sure. Thanks, yep. All right. <clears throat> Now we come to the select board and town administrator update part of the evening. I'll start on my, my top there. How about Tom? All set. All set. Scott? Uh, we're scheduling a capital planning group for the town now that budget season has begun. Jeff's got the first feelers out, and I saw at least one response today. So begin compiling what was done last year and uh, what the requests are so far this year. Yeah. <clears throat> And I see we've got a personnel committee meeting scheduled for the 12th, so. And uh, how about you, Jeff? Yeah, just two quick things. Um, the first is an update on the holiday lights uh, contest. That's right, town. that's right. Um, the information is on the website. I just wanted to go over some quick numbers. There were 29 entries, um, nice. five winners, uh, and you can find out who they were. Um, I think that FCAT uh, did a little video. Um, I, Santa, I think it was actually about Santa visiting last yes. week, but they yep. did a video on that's on YouTube. Um, nice. But I just wanted to say thank you um, to Jim Ewan, the rec creation coordinator um, for putting it all together on such short notice. And then to uh, Frontier Pizza, Millstone Bridgeside and the Sunderland Corner Store who all donated the prizes for the lights. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention because I noticed when I was printing out the agenda that I didn't put it on is that the town office building is gonna be closed on Thursday in observance of uh, New Year's Day, okay. which is on okay. Friday when we're closed. Yeah. Um, just want to make people aware of that. And then the last thing is I got an email right before uh, the meeting started and our hazard mitigation plan was approved by FEMA. Hey, 
There so we go. Probably nice. it, I will put on the next uh, agenda. It, I plan on putting on the next agenda. <laughs> um, formal, a formal vote to adopt it as okay, a town. Good. I think that's our next step. Uh, but yep. it happened so quickly, we couldn't do it tonight. So. That's good. That's good news. All right. <clears throat> And then we've, we've now reached our public comment section of the meeting. I don't know if anybody has got any comments, but <clears throat> probably not. I'll just follow up, but good, Mr. Chair, with regard to the hazard mitigation plan. There was a lot of work yeah. both the COG level and participants here at the, at the town office building from a variety of, variety yeah. of different backgrounds. And that, that plan, um, if, if, you know, represents a lot of hours of work and if it's executed it will leave the town in a better place yep i would agree and it's one of those things you hope you work at it and you hope you don't have to execute it but if you do right, right. yep that's thank you that's whoop, getting my exercise tonight <laughs> uh, all right great <clears throat> um since we don't have any public comment um i Next meeting will be next Monday, January 4th in 2021. So have a, everybody have a safe and happy new year. Um, probably be a little quieter than usual, but I think, uh, I think like the lights, I think was a, it was a very nice thing to see uh, all the lights around town and everything. And, and unlike years ago, we've got LED lights now. So it's a lot cheaper in the electricity department to have, <laughs> to have some festive fun. So. Hopefully go. this becomes a, an annual tradition. So nice. Yeah, nice thing. Wow. Happy New Year, everyone. All right. Um, we have a motion for adjournment. So motion. moved. Second. Oh. <laughs> All right. All those in favor for adjourning at oh, just about eight o'clock. Aye. Aye. All right. Thanks and have a good uh, and safe holiday, folks. <laughs>